Hello. Good morning. Nah, it's two o'clock here. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi. Hola. Aloha. Konnichiwa. Hi, everybody. Hey, sweetie. How are you? Hey, guys. Excuse me. Bonjour. Hello. Hi. How's everybody doing today? I hope wonderful because it's Saturday and it's beautiful outside. Well, at least here in Georgia, <clears throat> good old America. Raining. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Can't help you out there. Sorry. It's gorgeous here. <clears throat> I'm great. I am really good. I feel better. I'm over this cold I had. I am not crying this morning. <laughs> Snowing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, no, 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 no. No snow here. Yeah, I'm not crying this morning. I woke up happy. I don't know if you guys saw this, the scope that I when I was breaking out crying because I woke up to some finding some bad news, but I'm good. Oh, good. I have, like, all this leftover cake I'm eating from the tasting I just did. Took a few weeks. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm scoping. Um, sometimes I come on and I give you guys information on how I do certain things. And um, today, because I don't take many orders anymore and I just basically focus on my own thing and my own classes that I'm trying to teach and my own craft, um, I only take um, on orders when it's something I'm really interested in. And unfortunately, it was family. So it's like, I uh, probably kind of have to take on the tasting order. But... So, but we'll get into that family thing too. So I just wanted to give you guys, um, some of you cake newbies and some of you non-cake newbies, excuse my button, it just keeps popping open. Um, some of you non-cake people, um, just kind of like the way that I do things and, um, how I set my tastings up and maybe you guys can, you know, get ideas and get inspired and venture out and kind of, uh, it'll help you guys out on how to get your tastings, <clears throat> even, um, tasting appointments. So... Starting from the beginning, hey, thanks for inviting people. I appreciate that. Um, so starting from the beginning, um, the first thing that I do, hey, appreciate all of you guys inviting people. That makes me feel good. Sorry. Oh, my God, I've been standing up straight this whole time. So the first thing I do is, one, um, I designate a certain area. I work from home. I designate a certain area in my home to be my tasting area. And lucky for me, when you walk through my house, the only, my house isn't, like, open. You I, you can't really see the rest of my house. You can only see this dining room, which is wonderful because I have this big, beautiful window. I have room to stack all my cakes that I work on. And um, so, yeah, so they come in and they sit here at my dining room table. And it's really, it's, you, there's no pictures of us in here. Um, I basically kept it as my um, tasting studio area where they come in and taste. And I clean up. So make sure you clean up. If you work from home, you got to remember that sometimes it's people get really iffy about things. Um, like, oh, she's a home baker, she doesn't have a place, or he's a home baker, they have a place. Yeah, you want to make them feel as professional as possible, and I always want them to feel like they're not really in my home, that this is a place in my job, my work, because I don't want them to think that, um, or, you know, that I'm not up to par as anybody else. Hi! As anybody else, and, um, and I don't want you guys to, I don't want other people to look at me and think, oh, she's an amateur, because I'm not an amateur. So you don't want people to think of that as you either. You're not amateurs. You want to be as professional as possible. Even if you're new at, new at it, you want to still maintain a professional manner. And I'm great. Hi. Hello. Um, and uh, so what I did was, one, I made sure that this room is only for me. I mean, throughout the week, there's toys in here for my son. You know, my dog roams throughout this room every so often when I'm working. But when I have appointments going on or when I'm baking, I make sure I treat this as a bakery. And I make sure I do it am amongst the, the bakery times, okay? So you want to first start off doing that. And trust me, it helps with your sanity. Um, so I designate this room as my tasting room. And you guys have seen these cakes behind me many times before. And it's a nice place to showcase my work because when they come in, and you have those clients that go, well, draw me a sketch. I want to see what this, this looks like. And I do do sketches, but I only do them 
um, past a certain amount of money. Like, I'm not going to do a sketch for a $100 cake. That's not happening. A $100 cake is really simple and basic. Doesn't take a lot into it, for me at least. So you want to make sure that you have some limitations um, set for yourself and understand your limitations and don't worry about if you hesitate or forget some of the information that you put on your terms and conditions. Have it in front of you. Like I keep my iPad in front of me and I have my website up where my terms and conditions are just in case because I talk really fast and I know sometimes I can miss talk. So I make sure I go back and I'm checking my facts and I take notes before they get here. Okay, so before they get here, I, where's my piece of paper? I write down, it's not a deal. I write down um, all the stuff that pertains to their order, okay? I have it on the computer, but I want, I, writing that, you, you will remember things 10 times faster, 10 times more if you write it down. This is good information for any level of caker. Yes, it is, exactly, Sippy King. It's, it, it takes a while for you to get into your groove, but I've learned to, you have to kind of, Cake. No, I, I know what you meant. <laughs> Not coker. <laughs> um, you have to kind of, kind of practice it, talk it out through your head to know what you're going to do and be confident in what you're in what you're presenting. You have to be the cake. Exactly. Be the cake. <laughs> um, so I write down all the information. I make sure I write down the dates that we've discussed, the times that we've discussed, any flavors, um, anything. So I'm not going back and forth in my iPad or on my computer or anything like that. I hand write it all out or back and forth. So anything that I print out because I'm not, if I print something out, I'm still going to have to keep looking at it. I like to write it all down. Uh, everything. I made sure that if she wanted the cupcakes with jewels on them, I had a price for the cupcakes with jewels on them. So I didn't have to do the math while I was, while I'm in front of her. Okay. The last thing you want to do is seem unsure of yourself. I had all the math on here. Oh, good. That's good, Kathy. I have all the math written down just in case I needed to do it and I didn't want to have to calculate it in front of her. I didn't calculate the total in front of her, yes, but I didn't want to go, well, it costs this much for me to buy the ice mall and it costs this much for this and this is how much time. No. You want to have your pricing. You want to have what you need and have it all down and jot down notes. That's, you know, it's okay to jot down notes. Don't don't think you have to keep it all here. I Like I said, I talk too fast and then I'm blah, 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 and shit doesn't make sense. So I write it all down. Um, my cakes, you, I unfortunately, um, you guys won't be able to see it right here, but if you go to my Instagram um, or if on my Facebook page, those prices, can't you send them to the customer via email before the tasting? Yes, you can. I um, Before the tasting, I actually um, first spoke to the customer to find out the date. All right, so dates and um, I didn't care about the theme, just the date because the date I need to know if I'm available. Do you use a cake software? If so, which one do you recommend? I do not use cake software. I, I do all the math um, right here. I, I made my own spreadsheet. Um, I, I know there's Bakernomics out there, and that's an app that you can use to help you with pricing if that's what you're asking, but I don't use that either. Um, so basically, what I do is I speak to my customer. I find out dates. They talk to me a little bit, get some information. I ask all the questions I feel I need to ask if there's going to be delivery, um, what flavors, blah, 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 blah. And then I send them an email. The email will consist of the entire conversation we just had, okay? And if I feel like I forgot anything, then in that same email on that same day, right after I've hung up the phone, I go and write that email to them and let them know what questions I have for them. Because you want to be on top of it. The last thing you want to do is, oh, I'll do it in 30 minutes. No, okay? If this is money, hi, this is your money. This is my lifestyle. I got to pay my bills like this. So I'm not going to wait 30 minutes because I want them to put the deposit in now, right? So I speak to them, whatever. They come back to me and they tell me, well, I want to try your product. Well, for me, I'm not a, I don't have a brick and mortar. I'm a stay-at-home baker, okay? Stay-at-home mom. I work from home. I'm 30 years old. Yes, you still have, you have to do it while it's still fresh in your mind. Exactly. So what I do is I send them the email and everything like that. They want the tasting. And so the, my, I have a fee for my tasting. All right. So I set my fee. What I also do in that same email, I send them a link, not to my website, but to my website's pricing section. Because, you know, people will go to your website, but they, they'll probably overlook the information, your terms and conditions. On my website, I got my pricing, my terms and conditions, my delivery information on one page. Because if you want to know pricing, you got to read the terms and conditions. You got to read the ordering. You got to that all that on one page so they get all the information. So I send them that. I don't send them my gallery. Okay. 
I don't send them that because they either found me Instagram or they either found me Facebook or they either found me on my website. So they already saw my gallery. I'm showing them my pricing. Okay, so I send them in that email too so they can read up all that information. Also, one thing, my website's www.yesmam.us. Um, one, one other thing, before you, um, before you even take on the client, okay, before you even take it on, some of you don't do this, that's fine, but before you do, the last thing I want to do is sit here for an hour, hour and a half and waste my time talking to a customer that is not going to pay my fee. So when I'm talking to them and they're telling me, well, I want cakes. If we're talking cakes, cupcakes, you know, whatever. If we're talking cakes, well, let me just tell you, my cake prices start at $130. Right there. Right there, they already know, okay, my cake is either going to be $130 or a little bit more than $130. So I feel them out because I'm not going to waste my time continuing with emails you know sometimes you get oh that's a little too high right there okay then obviously you and I aren't a perfect match right but 130 okay no problem that sounds great I want to do a tasting let me send you all the information you some of you guys and I know and I and I'm not I bet you've tested a lot of cakes yeah <laughs> yeah have a minimum exactly um you um some of you guys don't do this. Some of you guys go, oh, let me uh, take a do a tasting for you. Let, you know, oh, let me email you. No, there's certain, you want to stay as professional as possible. I don't do cream pies, no. Uh, I do cakes and cupcakes, that's it. I don't do cake pops. I don't do any type of treats. I, I give all that out to my friends. Um, but I don't, I want you guys to know that you guys have to have a minimum. You guys have to make sure you're pricing it together. I know you guys don't. I know it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. I, I get it. It took me a long time for me to do it because I'm a home baker. And I'm like, I'm just going to take this $200 and I'm going to buy whatever I want to buy. No, no, no. Make sure you have your pricing ready. Make sure you have your information ready. If you want, you can check out my website. Um, I've checked out thousands of people's websites. Check out Cara Bustos website. website. She has um, pretty, um, listen, Daniel, if you're new to my scope, just know. If you're a perv, I don't like the pervs in here. And if you're going to be in here, at least give me some hearts before you do anything or say anything uncalled for, okay? Just putting it out there. Any pervs in here or anything like that, make sure you heart me up before you start asking me to show my titties or anything. Um, so, what was I? <laughs> so, what was I? Uh, so, yeah, so they call me up. Sorry, I'm trying to stick to the timeline. So, they call me up. I give them all the information. Give it to them now. Don't wait. All right. Don't say, well, I'll wait till I talk to them next time to let them know now. No, no, no. Give it to them now. It might be you feel like it's a lot of information to give at once, but give it to them now so they can get it over with. Um, I mentioned mine, yes, ma'am, dot us. And then I mentioned Cara Bustos website, sending the hearts, but keep the shirt on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Cara Busto is sift by Cara dot com. I know she has a really good website. Um, Liz Merrick, Artisan, um, I think hers is Artisan Confections or Artisan Cakes or something. I don't know Liz Merrick's website, I'm sorry. But I'm sure if you just Google Liz Merrick, her website will pop up. Um, yeah, I know. I talk really fast. I, I go on my own limit. Uh, so anyway, so give them all the information that you need. Yeah, Artisan Cakes, thank you. Because you're Artisan Confections, Confections, thank you. Jesus, see? Yes. Um, so get all the information that you could possibly get from them on your first initial phone call. If you missed anything, email them right away. Once you finish that phone call, email them all the information. I book the tasting, right? My tastings cost so and so amount of money, depending on what they want. I do a minimum of three flavors because I'm not going to sit here. Yeah, there we go. Artisan Cake Company. Thank you so much. Um... And um, I do a minimum of three flavors. The reason why I do a minimum of three flavors because we're not going to sit here and eat six different flavors of cakes that I just made for you to be like, oh, well, I like this one. Oh, maybe we should do this one. Maybe we should combine this with this. No, 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 no. The way that I work is you give too many options, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. They're going to sit here forever trying to think about what they want, what they don't want. Customers already know what they like and what they don't like. I'm not a big chocolate person, so I know if I'm going to go to a cake tasting, I ain't going to taste your chocolate. I don't want to taste that. I don't want to eat it. I don't care if my mama on my daddy's side or my sister and brother love chocolate. I ain't ordering that shit. 
So I'm not going to do it. So that, so you just have to know to ask, what flavors would you like to try? When they go, oh, well, what's your popular flavors? Red velvet, vanilla. Like, people order that all the time. So my customer said, you know what, red velvet's my favorite. I want to try chocolate and vanilla. All right. I do charge. Sorry, I have cake on my hand. I do charge more. Give too many options to people. It creates more work. Yeah, it creates more work. It cre Ugh, it's just too much. And I know that we can do that to ourselves. We can go, well, they might not like this. So let me add something else onto it. Because we start, start second guessing ourselves, especially being home bakers. As far as I know, because I'm not a, I don't, I don't have my own storefront. So I can only speak from what I know. Being a home baker, I'm like, well, maybe I should do this. Maybe I, should. I was up last night going, maybe I should do an, like a second chocolate buttercream because sometimes people like buttercream with real butter and some people don't like it with real butter and some people, let me tell you, I was like, you know what, too much thinking, I'm going to make this buttercream that I know how to make and I'm going to make the chocolate one I know and they either love it or love it or they don't because I'm making what I make and I, I, I don't need to think about what other people make. And what makes them happy. This is what I make. My flavors are good. Here it is. So I offered them three flavors. You made three minimum or three maximum. Three max. That's that's it. Oh, sorry. Did I say three is my minimum? Three max. I, you only get three flavors. If they want more than three, they can pay additional cost. But the tasting fee covers three flavors. That's three cakes and three buttercreams. Yeah. If they want um, fruit or alcohol or anything like that, um, flavors or infused cakes or stuff like that, that costs extra too. So it starts off about $36, $30 for a tasting of three flavored cakes. What I sit down with my customers and I start talking to them at first before I even bring the cake out and I start talking to them just kind of like, hey, how's it doing? What's going on? Let's talk, you know how, you know, to make them more comfortable because when they feel more personable with you, they want to really get to know you and they really want, they really start trusting what you can do. I want my customers to trust what I can do. I don't like my customers going, oh, draw me a sketch. No, send me, I, I really need it to be this or turn it to the left. No, no, no. Here's my presentation. You can see what I can do. If you have second thoughts of me doing your cake, then maybe I'm not your caker. Okay? So I talk to them a little bit. Then I bring out my cakes. I also have bottles of water for them. I have everything ready and set up. Okay? I have my cakes on plates. Um, and what I do is I set mine on, on uh, rectangle long white plates. And I have my pieces of cake on there and I cover it in plastic wrap and I put it in the fridge. And about 20 to 15 minutes before they get here, I take it out of the fridge. All right. But you always want to put plastic wrap on your cake so you can keep your cake nice and moist. Look, my cake is still nice and moist. These are just the scraps. This is not what I serve them. These are just the scraps of it. Still nice and moist. And so you want to keep, make sure you feed them nice and moist cakes, nothing too hot. Nothing too cold. It was very nice in room temperature. A little cool because it was out of the fridge. So I brought them the cakes. We sat down. There was two people. Oh, also that's the other thing. I have a um, a three-person limit. You can only bring three people. I'm into threes. I don't know. You can only bring three people. You can only have three flavors. Because when you have 20 people there at your tasting, shit, when you even have four, that's four too many. You need an odd man out so they make sure they're the, the tiebreaker. All right? So make sure you have that. And especially if you work from home, you don't want all these people in your house and stuff like that. And I have limited amount of seating. There is four chairs here, and I can only sit three people in it because we're not going to the living room to sit in my couch, none of that. I keep it in this room. This is, my, this is what I do, and you have to follow my guidelines. Um, so then they sat down. They tasted the cakes. They were liking them. They were loving them. I was like, great, perfect. I'm not, and something I learned from Jake, uh, uh, Frosted Affair Jay, um, he, do you bake three flavors fresh every time? Yes, I do. I bake three separate cakes every time. Yeah. Unless I have like two tastings in one day and they're same flavors, then they get part of the same cake. But I, yeah, every time. Um, I don't, um, I don't keep my cakes, put them in the freezer and keep them for a tasting later. I don't do that because my tastings are so far in between because I don't take on that many orders because I do I do classes um, and I want to make cakes that I want to make and I don't want to make cakes for like someone's graduation. I don't want to do that. Um, so they come in, they're tasting the cakes, they love them, they like them. I'm not leaving them alone. That's what I learned from Jay. Jay said, don't leave your clients alone. You leave them alone, they start going, oh, no, I don't want to be here or maybe we can cut them. Don't leave 
I sat right here and I watched them eat this. So whether they liked it or not, I was going to see it on their face. Okay? Honesty is the best way for me to figure out if we're going to work together. So they loved it. Everything was great. We went with the rolling. I started asking them what they wanted. Specific now. Now I've gotten really specific. What exactly do you want on your cake? What exactly do you want it to say? Just know that this is how thick my tears are. Know that this is how the buttercream will come. What exact time are you going to come and pick? So you get real specific now. Those are things that I just ask the questions from trial and error now because I've been through so much crap that it's like, no, I need to make sure I ask all these questions. So you going to be tasting cakes? No, I'm not going to taste any cakes. I'm, I'm, already, I'm already eating all this. <laughs> shop at... Uh, maybe, maybe people will shop there, maybe people won't. Don't, you know, I mean, did you really have to advertise it right now? Keep them on track. Exactly, keep them on track. Um, so I'm really specific with them, and as I'm talking to them, I am writing down now, on the front is my notes, and on the back I am writing down the official stuff that they are going to want, right? So I wrote down, they're going to want the six inch cake that they ordered, red velvet. That the cupcakes they want, they actually want it in all three flavors. So that was good. So that's perfect for me. All three flavors, not a problem. They enjoyed everything. You really got to be selling cupcakes. Mm, I don't really, so I don't understand what you're saying. Um, I asked them what exactly the cake want, but all that, all that information. Right, I didn't understand that either. Uh, the, the screen's kind of far, so it's kind of hard for me to like touch everybody and block the people who are just randomly discussing random stuff um block party. <laughs> yeah uh, so then i start writing things down they wanted to rent a, a cake cupcake stand for me we started discussing that um there's a fee to rent that for me also so all these little things that i start discussing in details with them right they even ask me questions like how would you set up your cake table i do set up sweet tables um and i don't generally offer like big advice on how to set that up because that's something you have to pay for but I didn't mind a answering the questions that they had and if you do have a problem answering questions that people have and I noticed this a lot with um teachers who are teaching cake classes too they don't want to answer certain questions that students have just let them know sorry this is information only privy to students or even your customers sorry this is information only privy to people who actually hire me to do this part um there's nothing wrong with telling someone no so uh, the faster you guys learn that word the easier your life will be because i'm like when people call me and say you want to taste me no sorry that sorry that your or your cake is do you need a cake but no you know um so i discuss all that information with them i write it all down okay now they were family so we were sitting down talking for a while but when you are with your customer, what you do is you already have your computer or your iPad or whatever, your tablet, your phone, whatever set up next to you, ready to write them out a deposit invoice or your just general invoice. I use PayPal for my invoicing. Um, a lot of people use different things, but I use PayPal, I invoice with them. I already have a bunch of terms and conditions saved up, so anytime I'm ready to write an invoice, I already have one saved in my PayPal so I don't have to rewrite the whole thing or copy and paste. Oh my goodness. Is, is, is that turning you on? Gee, somebody blocked them. Ugh, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm going to bring this closer. So I can get to the people so interested in this button on my shirt. How much salt should you add in order for them to taste like... <laughs> A whole lot. <laughs> People are weird. They say the weirdest things. On Periscope, for goodness sakes. Lord. Um, yeah, it's so weird. I, I mean, at least go into like a porn site or something. Like, people talk about cake. It's like, they're not, it's not even pervs. They're just creepers. Like, you're a bunch of creepers. Anyways. Um, so, yeah. So, we discussed all that. Seriously, check your shirt button right quick i mean yeah i see it but i'm not i'm not too worried about it as long as like there's no nipple hanging out i don't really i'm pretty i'm pretty okay it's it's like there's only like these many ones i'm pretty okay uh but thank you i appreciate that um <laughs> so we discussed the final price okay and then what i did was i went and made up an invoice on my paypal 
and I sent them the invoice. Now, they received the invoice before they drove off in the driveway. All right? Um, so, and my thing is, is that you either need to secure a payment right then and there or discuss when a payment is due. Okay, so they have some time to actually give me the deposit. All right? So if the deposit is not reached at the time that they are supposed to give it to me, then then there's going to be an additional fee because now I got to rush to make your order because you didn't want to give me a deposit at the time. All right? So my main thing is, is that you guys want to make sure that you guys are as professional as possible. Um, you guys have your cakes ready and baked. Don't rush around. And please, 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 please make sure that your physical appearance is as good as your, you want your cakes to look. All right? Um, I didn't walk around in my socks, even though I'm at home. I'm not in my flip-flops. I have shoes on that are covering my toes. I am in proper attire. You know, so make sure... No, thank you for even coming in. I appreciate that. Make sure that you guys are presenting yourself well. Because it's, it's a different atmosphere from when you're actually having your own storefront. Exactly, your own storefront to being in your home. You know what I mean? I mean, for a week, I'm like, I have my man... That's the best tip ever. Right. I, I mean, for a week, I had my man out there mowing the lawn, cleaning up the front yard, because I'm like, I'm not going to have people over here making my house. How many days do you recommend that you give for the deposit? Um, you have to actually give me a deposit two weeks in advance. Two, and a, two, and a half, two to two and a half weeks in advance. The final payment is due at least four days, at least four days before um, your pickup or delivery. Um... So, and your face is your business, best foot forward always. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I, when I, when I first started out, I would be like, I gotta finish this. I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta do, I would be a, a, a wreck. But now it's like, make these three cakes, make these three frostings. This morning I made the cream cheese frosting because I don't like cream cheese frosting sitting in the fridge too long. Did that, put it all on a plate, made it look really nice. Here, maybe I can pull up my Instagram. Here, and then show you guys how I do my presentation for my tasting. Here it is. So what I do, oh, there's a little glare. I have my forks ready. There's three forks. I have my napkin, and I have my plate of cake, right? Right, exactly. But that's not even the only plate. I actually have two plates of cake. So I bring one, and then I have the other one over there in the um, in the kitchen, right? Just in case, because sometimes your customer's excited. I mean, they pay for this tasting. They pay for me to make this cake. They can have the whole thing for all I care. Um, so I have two plates just in case, because sometimes people don't want to eat off the same plate. And two plates, two same presentations of the three flavors. Have everything ready and prepared for you. I have a little notepad here um, just in case I need to sketch something out really quick. You know what I mean? On um, Depending on how far out the order gets. I knew leaving here that this order wasn't going to get that high to where um, my tastings, they start at uh, they start at about $30. And it just goes up from there because then they start asking me for, you know, alcohol infused cakes. Do you just use regular buttercream, just sample cakes or whatever frosting flavor they want? Whatever frosting flavor they want. Um, if they if If they want vanilla cake with strawberry frosting, then that's what I'm making. I'm making vanilla cake with strawberry frosting or buttercream. Um, so I have actually three different frostings here. So I have a, a red velvet with cream cheese, a chocolate with chocolate, and a yellow um, cake with um, vanilla. Yeah, I try to stay very professional because I live in a... So this is the thing. I live in a home. Um, it's not a big home, but I live in a home. I have a man that lives here with me. I have a baby that lives here with me. And I have a huge dog that lives here with me. The last thing I want is for them to walk in here and think that anybody that lives here with me lives in this room with me. You know what I mean? No. This is my cake room. We ain't having Christmas dinner in here. That's not happening. We're not doing Thanksgiving dinner here. We're going to eat over there in the living room for all that. This is my cake room. This is my business room. I made my boyfriend wake up, get my son, and they left. I don't have them here either. I don't got a crying baby in the background. I have my dog in a cage in the garage. So I, I keep it as professional as possible. And this is really for anybody that, you know, I, I'm solely talking for people who work from home. Yeah, um, no. Nobody's ever questioned me about my dog. 
don't close your shop. No, people are trying to get to where you are. Don't close your shop. <laughs> Even though I don't want a bakery when I get to that point, but don't. That that's awesome. <laughs> Um, no, my, um, nobody's ever questioned my dog. I've seen people on Periscope go, oh my god, I can't believe you have a dog. Nobody's ever questioned my dog. Um, my Instagram is yes underscore ma'am underscore sweets. Um, but I have seen people say, oh, I can't believe you got a dog around in your kitchen. My dog walks through this entire house. Yeah, this is home. My, I don't have cat, I had to get rid of my cat like four years ago because I couldn't deal with that anymore. No, <laughs> these were my cousins that just left and I made them pay full price. Yeah, exactly. They secure. When I bake my cakes and stuff like that, my dog isn't in my kitchen. Yeah, I know. I know some places have different food cottage laws. I know that. When I first started periscoping, I periscoped about food cottage laws. And yeah, some places are different. Yeah. They, um, I, and when I have customers come over or when I'm doing big orders and things like that, then my dog goes in the garage in his cage or, um, I have actually a gate that keeps my kid and the dog out from this area, from the kitchen to my little studio area over here in the dining room. They get, um, gated out so they can't even come in here when I'm working on stuff. Um, my main locations where I'm working is either in this room, the kitchen, or my computer desk over here and I converted my laundry closet into a computer room so um yeah those places they get kicked out of um which i understand everybody's hesitation because it's a dog there's fur everywhere and everything but that becomes that's exactly it becomes your own thing where you got to make sure you're cleaning up because the last thing you want is to present something with dog food dog hair and stuff like that in there in new jersey you can't run a food business out of your home it's blessed to be able to, oh, oh i'm sorry i still wish the bc cottage laws allowed uh, where are you located? Sorry for so many. No, it's okay. I am located in Georgia, in Douglasville, Georgia. Um, I'm about 35 minutes away from Atlanta. And I'm like almost on the border of Alabama. So, yeah. So, this is just so you guys can understand that there are certain things that you should be doing. That you should be doing. Um, you don't have to do what I'm saying you're doing. But there's things that you should take from what I'm saying and make it your own. Okay, make sure you have a presentation from when you have clients coming over, especially if you're working from home. Cuddles laws in California, as long as your pet are not in the prep area, it's allowed. Right, exactly, which I think should be anywhere. Like, it, here we don't have those laws for pets in the home for food cottage, but either way, I feel like I'm not going to have my dog in here while I'm mixing this frosting. Oh, good, I'm glad you are learning a lot. Periscope people teach you a lot of things, and, and um, if you're in any of these Facebook communities, they help you out too, so... Um, yeah, I, when I come on here, I'm actually supposed to be going to the cake store purchasing a bunch of stuff. You've given the awesome tips that I've learned from with the shop. I'm giving you awesome tips for your shop? How long have you had your shop? Wait, was food in the process in Georgia? I'm sorry, I missed that last comment about the food cottage laws in Georgia. Um, so yeah, so just make sure you have all those things. Don't be afraid to double check your facts three years. Oh, okay, that's cool. Congratulations. They say... Yes, your tips are on point. Ah, oh, thanks. They say that when you've um, passed the three-point year, three-year um, milestone, that you've actually made it in your business. So, congratulations! I'm very proud of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just make sure you guys don't be afraid if you don't know something to just you know take a pause and double check your work. Was the food cutters laws process for Georgia difficult? No, it's actually very easy, like very easy like very easy <laughs> so um they just come they just check over your stuff and that's it gap makes you file every year um they don't come stop it at your home and if they do they set an appointment yeah no problem yeah it's it's different everywhere yeah yeah i know um but what i have noticed is that a lot of people who do want to run a business out of their home they rally together they get the signatures that they need they make a motion to talk to their city and stuff like that because you can get the ball rolling in your own state to get that happening um so there's a lot of places like that 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 got started there, i know there's one woman she does a bakery i don't know where she is i think north carolina or i'm not sure and she got it rolling for her state texas is really good on uh, food cutters log also that's cool no my pleasure 
Awesome. I'm glad that you got enough tips and I'm glad that you guys feel comfortable to know to say that you don't know something and that you are learning something because that's what I'm all about on Periscope. I'm here to teach you guys and tell you guys about my happening so maybe it can help you guys out in any manner. Thank you. Your positive attitude. Ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, definitely, definitely look into that. Um, I can't remember what state it was, but she got it started in her state because she wanted to run her business for so long. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, yeah. Um, oh, and then what I did, what I didn't, forgot to add, what I did when my customers left, I already had um, two boxes, pre-boxed up, of nicely cut pieces of these cakes in their boxes so they can take it home with them. Oh, good. Good, good, good. And, and remember, stick to what, I put it on my website so that way I don't mess up. Because if I'm like, I don't want to have to keep searching for my information, I can just put it right here. So what my customers are reading is what I'm reading. What I'm reading is what they're reading. You know what I mean? So that's one reason I put it on the website. Anything that you get in an invoice is already on the website. I just copy and paste it on there. Um, thanks. Um, so I always try to stick to what I put out there. So if this is on my website, I need to make sure I stick to it. And that way... Because sometimes when people see it in writing, then they take it more serious. Like, yes, as you saw, if they go, oh, well, that's kind of high. Can we do, like, $2 for the cupcakes? No, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, like, my website says it's $3 per cupcake, you know. So, it, you know what I mean? you got to stick to what you put out there. Do you make your own website? Yes, I made my own website. Mm, so, I used to do graphic design and photography before I started messing around with you guys and these cakes and stuff. Oh, thank you so much. I hope you did get a lot of information. Um, I'm supposed to go to the cake store now and spend all my monies. Um, so, yeah. So, I hope you guys did get a lot of information. I hope you guys understand what I'm telling you. And my, Oh, thanks. Um, and explaining to you. If you guys have any questions, just hit me up. You can find me on my Instagram at yes underscore ma'am underscore sweeps. And, um, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. I'm in the A. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Toodles. Have a wonderful day. Do something wonderful and positive. Make a difference in your life. You want to come here? Oh, I live in the country. Like, there's nothing to do here. <laughs> bye. Bye, bye, bye. I appreciate all of you. Toodles.